Hi guys. Hope you guys are having a good night. Um, I've been running around getting ready for this live after work and and cooking dinner. So I'm just going to jump right in. Okay. Um, the first thing that I was going to do was I have a, a teal colored, very light teal, very light Tiffany colored tumbler that I'm going to be, um, just putting some epoxy on and I'm going to be putting a layer of our opal. It's called Moon Magic. This is the sample size bag, okay, that we give out with every order. You can order one glitter, you can order, you know, a bunch of glitters, but if you order at least one glitter, you're getting a sample. We just grab whatever is available or whatever we think might go with your stuff and um, or with your order, and we pop that in the bag. That's just a little way of saying thank you, and we hope that you'll shop with us more. All right, I'm going to turn on my turner. And move my camera a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, now, here is the eel, okay? It's, um, it's pretty much that color in real life. If it was a really light color, I would have liked a little darker, but this is just what I had on hand for today. Okay, also the last time I did a live, my partner Mary had already mixed up the, um, the epoxy for me. And this time she is watching from her house. So I have to mix it myself. I put these rubber gloves on. Oh. I'm a little sweaty. They don't wanna go on. That's okay. Okay. So while I'm mixing the epoxy over here, I'm using Alumalite. Amazing clear cast. That's usually what I use. I'm going to mix that up. Now, um, if you guys have any questions while I'm doing this, Mary is, Mary is available to answer any and all comments. Um, hi, Chrissy. I see you. Hi, Jamie. Thanks so much for coming to watch. I hope you find this, um, this helpful. Um, what I've already done, Jamie, is I have already glittered, I epoxy, glitter, epoxy, sanded, put my negative decal on, and spray painted. So this is pretty much the, the bare bones of doing a peekaboo, okay? And I'll give you a better close-up of that in a little while. Right now, I'm just showing off one of my glitters since I have the opportunity and I'm curious myself. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as soon as I get this mixed up. I'm doing this. This is the mason jar that we did on our live the other day where I had spray painted it lime green and then I went in and put epoxy and then I put our mother of pearl over top of that, which is a beautiful chunky opal. And then off camera after that dried, I put a, um, oh, you're so welcome, Jamie. I'm glad you're here. Um, I went on ahead and put the, um, the second coat of epoxy on that. And before the live tonight, I wet sanded it with a sanding sponge. This is actually what I used. I just dip it in a bowl of water and sand it. Um, it was mostly smooth anyway, so I didn't really have a lot of sanding to do. I didn't have a lot of problem with that. Um, this is a, I believe it's a 220 and then it's a finer than 220. So um, so that's what I use. And you just pick those up anywhere. They sell them at Home Depot, Lowe's, all that stuff. Um, let's see. I'm sorry. Mary, what do you what do you need, hon? I can't see. Okay, um, so I wet sand mostly because it saves on dust. Um, you know, you don't get so messy and dusty and you're not breathing in epoxy dust, so that's why I do that. Okay, I'm making all kinds of bubbles. It doesn't really matter because it's just a base coat for a um for glitter. So it's kind of okay at this point. I'm using my finger to put it on. I'm gonna use my finger. I'm also, I'm using my Turner if anybody's interested. It's a cup of Saurus. 
you can check out um, Cup of Source on Etsy. They also are on Facebook. Turners are awesome. I talk about them a lot. I recommend them a lot. So that's what I'm using. And Mary's over here like, oh gosh, it's so thick, girl. <laughs> I like my epoxy thick. <laughs> so anyway, all right. I'm just gonna hurry up and put this on. Oh, okay, I see what it's saying. Hi, Christine, how you doing, hon? So I'm doing my first coat of epoxy in case you missed anything. I know um, I'm behind from, from what I see you guys post. Whatever you guys say to me, I don't see, there's a delay, so I don't see it for a few minutes. Also, um, I forgot to say in the beginning, if you are watching this and the little red live is no longer in the top corner, then this is no longer live. Okay. I mixed up 20 milliliters of epoxy, but I'm probably only going to use five. <laughs> oh, I probably should play some music, maybe next time. I'm always worried when you do stuff like that, if it's going to be, um, you know, if you're going to get your video shut off, you never know. I had my fireworks display shut off by me last year because some music was playing in the background. All right, so base coat is spray paint and I use the 2X. I always use the Rust-Oleum 2X for everything. Cover is great and I don't have problems with it crackling or peeling or not sticking to what I'm painting or giving me fish eyes. So, you know, I just go with what I know. All right. I'm gonna just take my hand and just rub some of that off. One of these days I'll swipe that silicone brush my daughter never uses for her face masks and give that a try. I always forget it. And down here in my workspace, everything is glittered because we also bag the glitter down here. So it kind of gets into projects that I do down here. Usually I do my projects in another room, but we're demonstrating, so it's all good. Just want you guys to get an idea of some new techniques that you might not know about or be able to, um, see our product, you know, that kind of thing. Let me just grab a medicine cup. Okay. So this is Moon Magic. It's a very, very fine iridescent opal. And one sample size should be enough for you to do a whole cup. I'm just gonna start to put it on. Can you see? Because I'm seeing all the comments, so. Let me know if you need a better look. Or to Mary can yell at me. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Ooh, 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 super pretty. Wow. That kind of reminds me almost of, um, like a frozen theme cup. It's just that, it's that pretty icy opal. Oh, I love glitter with epoxy. I love these opals because there's, there's just so much you can do with them. Definitely gonna get more of those in, in different shapes. Um, the pretty much, the other colors are, they're all so similar that it's not worth carrying more than three um, but I will definitely be getting in different shapes in these and different mixes and different blends because they are just so cool 
You can also experiment with these and mix them with um, other iridescents, lighten them up, give them a different look. You can mix them with, um, with some hollows, just put a little bit in some hollows and give them a, um, just a little bit of a different sparkle in there, almost like maybe you tossed a little diamond in with the hollow. You can always experiment in tiny little batches. You don't have to waste a whole lot of glitter doing an experiment. You can take a medicine cup and mix that in however you want. I'm gonna take this off. I'll take that off and tip this up and I'm just gonna glitter the bottom. See, I love how solidly built these turners are. They are amazing, worth every penny and worth the weight. Um, yes, that's covered well. I don't see any mist spots. Okay, can you guys see that? I mean, that is just gorgeous. Let's see, where are we at? Okay, here we are, so sorry. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, it's yelling at me. It's telling me, rotate your device. So silly, you can't record sideways. So that is just beautiful. And when that gets the coat of epoxy over top of it, it is just going to shine. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. It's very hot down here, I'm so sorry. I'm like red and hot. Okay, so, move that up, okay. So that's that, and this is how much of the sample I have left. So that's probably enough for maybe another top half or an ombre or something. Um, also, I used a lot of that. You can definitely get away with using less. I used a lot of epoxy and a lot of that, you know, just so that we could get the time thing down. All right, now let's go on to the, um, to the peekaboo. I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to show you. What I've done here, it's a little lumpy. It needs more sanding. Uh, we're just demoing this, so, you know. And also, I'm gonna wood grain over the top of it, so the lumps really won't matter that much. Um, so, yeah, it is a little lumpier than I thought it was. I was rushing getting this prepared because it was just blank. Okay, so you can see what I've done is I've put the, uh, I've put the limes on there Okay, this is a lime green uh, color. So I decided I'm gonna do a lime cup and um, I put the limes on there after I sanded it, after I, I spray painted it, one coat of lime green. I put epoxy on there. I put one coat of mother of pearl glitter, the, op the chunky opal that we carry. I put another coat of epoxy, I sanded it I took it outside. I have an off-white mat. It's not. It's a. Uh, it's not a shiny. It's not a. You know. It's. It's a matte spray paint. I use that for my wood grains. I like the off-white because I feel like um, it helps bring out the wood tones better than a solid white base. Then um, before I spray painted it, of course, I put the vinyl. You know, I cut my vinyl limes out and I just put them on there. Just you know, random. Just threw them on there real quick. So what I will do now is I will do the wood grain on this tumbler. When the wood grain is done, I'll pop off the limes. Well, excuse me, when the wood grain is done, I will give it a coat of clear because I'm using alcohol inks. So I will clear coat that before I take off the limes. You don't want to clear coat it when you take, you take the limes off and then clear coat it because where you sanded your epoxy underneath will be dull. Um, so, that's that. So, okay. All right, let me grab a piece of paper, keep that turner going so that doesn't mess up. Okay, so what I'm gonna use for the wood grain is I have my Adirondack, alcohol inks Adirondack. Um, colors okay so I have these are Jim Holtz okay and I'm so sorry but these are not labeled so I don't know what color they are 
This one is, it's a Cabin in the Woods collection or something like that. I'm not really sure. Um, I know, wood grains are so fun. They're, they're so peaceful. Um, but anyway, it was a three, it was a three brown set that I ordered off of Amazon, but I'm pretty sure they carry them in Hobby Lobby and everywhere. They're not expensive and you can always grab these with the coupons, 40% off coupons or, you know, Michael's has coupons, AC Moore has coupons. They're awesome. So, you know, just hit that up. I use makeup brushes for my wood grains. Um, somebody a long time ago had given me that tip. I don't remember who that was. Uh, I watched a I watched a YouTube and she was using makeup brushes and it was like a game changer for me. I'm not even kidding. Uh, I also have a teak wood color, which is a little bit darker. So these are the makeup brushes that I'm using. They're very flat and they're very pointy. Okay. I have no idea where I got this from. It's a concealer brush, so you know some cheap brush that I grabbed a long time ago before I discovered better brushes. And this is a wet and wild um, eyeshadow brush that you can pick up at the dollar store. They sell them at the dollar store. So cool. And that's generally what I use. And we always start with like a lighter color. Uh, some people like to put it on the tumbler. Some people put it on the um, on paper or something else before they're doing the wood grain. I'm just going to start by putting it putting some on the tumbler here and just kind of going in for the wash you know just kind of doing it what's nice about wood grains is you don't have to be a professional to do this kind of stuff if you get lines in your wood grain or whatever you can just go right in and fix it you can just put more alcohol um, I don't really use alcohol that much when I'm using my my wood grain um, with the alcohol inks but you can you can wipe it clean with with rubbing alcohol with 90 percent rubbing alcohol so this is what I'm doing also the tumbler is still a tad bit wet <laughs> so that's what's happening right now you can always go back over your wood grain leave your marks the more you go over and pull, the more you're going to get that effect, okay? Now, this is looking very orange on camera, but that's okay. Like, you can come in and you can bring a dot, right? And then you can bring your small brush and you can work that dot into a really nice knot. Now, we're not really going to focus too much on knots at this base level, but as you can see, it's starting to do that. Okay. Now when you get these like these lines that I got right here, excuse me, I'm not giving you a finger. <laughs> you know, they, they'll dry like that, but if you come back in and you put just a little bit, I'll just put some epoxy, I mean, uh, I keep saying epoxy, put some alcohol inks on there and rub it in and it goes away. Just simple. Okay. And you can go in anywhere you want with anything and just do a nice pull just all the way up and all the way down. That's where you're definitely, and it works so much better when you're in layers, you know? Bring yourself some layers in there. Just do the whole tumbler with this. You can use a little, you can use a lot. I'm heavy handed with everything I do, so I use a lot. I will say I've done probably eight wood grains with this one set, even though I'm as heavy handed as I am. So that's that. I'll just bring that in really quick. The base coat doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is our first coat. It just kind of helps to build our color. Uh, the other day I saw a lady had done the wood grain with actual wood stain. I don't, I mean, it looked great. It looked really, really good. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, 
But if you don't have alcohol inks and you have some kind of wood stain on hand, give that a try. My very first wood grain that I did, I didn't have alcohol inks and I really, really wanted to do one. So I just took some brown paint and one of those brushes that's like, um, it's like a golden tip. It looks almost like furry hair at the ends. They're real cheap. They, they're real flat. They come in the packages of mixed brushes at Walmart. So I used one of those and a very light amount of um, just the cheap folk art craft paint and just went in there and did the faux look with that. And it turned out great. I It was one of the first cups that I did. I gave it to my brother-in-law um as a gift so that was that was really cool uh i did another wood grain um i did a cowboy theme for my father he loves john wayne so that was one of the first ones that i did too i did a lot of wood grains in the beginning because i really liked doing them i still really like doing wood grains and i love doing a peekaboo with the wood grain i love doing peekaboo it's a lot of fun And you really can't, you can't mess it up. You just want to make sure that you're getting your a full top to bottom stroke in. And you can, if you let it dry a little bit, when you come in with another coat, it, um, it helps to build those wood grain lines. So you'll help to get those lines when you let it dry. If you, um, uh, if you just want to go in and you don't want a lot of those lines, that's fine. You can do that. It's all in what you want. It's crafting. There's really no right and wrong way to do it. You just want it to look nice. You want it to look like what it is. As much as you can get it to look like what it is, which is wood. So... We're just going in and doing some wood. See, it's so easy. It's just brush. This brush is amazing. People use um, those sponge things or they'll use cotton balls. And I, I do not recommend cotton balls. They leave little fuzzy things all over your cup. And they're really not, um, really not all that great. And the sponge things, the alcohol ink likes to eat into those. And the alcohol ink will really mess those little sponge things up. So I'm going around the rim now, right? So I'm just going to pull that straight as much as you can. Just to keep that, just linear lines going. You just want to keep that going. Not that the bottom matters all that much. All right, so that's a base coat. I'm going to let that dry for just a second. I'm going to put this color away that I've been using. And I'm, I, I'm so sorry that I do not know what it's called. I think it's the Adirondack set. Yeah, that's probably what it is. I've had this a long time. It's the Adirondack set. And it comes with three colors. It comes with three browns. Okay. I'm going to just come right in with the dark color. Actually, maybe I'll just save the dark for the knots. What's this one? It's hard to tell in the bottle what they are. I got a piece of paper here. So I'll put like a drop on the paper. And just kind of spread that around a little bit and see what it looks like. This one's pretty dark. Looks more like a cherry wood. That one does. Okay. And this one is very dark. Walnut, I would say. Looks walnut. So, oh yes. That's definitely Walmart. Oh, Wal Walmart. Walnut. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> Gosh. I was in Walmart today. I made it out alive. I did not see any crazy stuff. It's very shiny right now. <laughs> very, very shiny. So I'm just going to go in with a drop. And I'm just going to brush it. Just straight up and down. You can use less on your second coat. Just brush that. Just dry that a little bit and then put a drop. Can you guys see okay? All right, there we go. 
we're just doing some relaxing brush strokes. I'm thinking of Bob Ross right now. We're just going to put a little tree over here. La, 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 la. There we go. So easy to do wood grains, guys. So easy. So easy. So, so easy. We'll go back in. Look. There we go. Just bring some color. There we go. Just bring in nice and dark color. Now I'm going to let that dry for a second. We'll put a knot right there. Maybe a little knot lives right here on this tree. <laughs> Happy little knot. <laughs> Feeling the Bob Ross flow tonight. Channeling, channeling Bob Ross. <laughs> have you guys done Bob Ross tumblers? If you have, you need to post them in the groove and show. I need to see them. That will be fun. All right. I'm going to open up the Walmart. <laughs> the Walmart color. <laughs> All right. So, now... The problem with the tumblers is that the drops like to roll. So I'm gonna do a wood crane. I mean a wood knot, okay, with the dark. Try to use a little bit. Just kinda let it spread out a little bit, right? Use the edges. See, we've got a knot coming right there. See that, we've got a knot coming, it's starting. Just pull those edges out. And then we just take I just a little tiny bit. Like I'm turning it sideways and I'm just gonna put a little drop. There we go. Look at that. Oh yay. Bringing that out. The brushes help you when you're trying to really spread that color. Spread that ink. Sometimes I'll put it on the paper, just dip the edge of my brush in it, and just bring it up. It kind of helps you work the knot. See, I'm working the knot. There we go. Bring it over there a little bit. Just work that knot. And for every time you go in into the knot, see that? Every time you go in, You're just gonna get a little bit more layers. Then you can come in and just kind of smooth it out a little bit and grain it up. So, all right, let's see. Ooh, there's the glare, okay. So we got a little bit of a dark knot there. See it? I can't see it that great. Let me see if I can move the camera so you can see it better out of the light. Okay, there we go. So that's kind of the effect we're going for. If I sit here and mess with it more, I can get it better, but we're gonna move on because everybody's watching and well, we don't wanna keep everybody all night. Now let's go back to that, uh, I think maybe it's a teak wood color, a cherry wood, I'm not really sure. It's an Adirondack color. So we're doing that. I'm just bringing it, bringing it, bringing it. What's nice about wood grains is they're not perfect in nature. Wood is not perfect. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. You just want to make it straight up and down. When you overlap that dry section, you're going to get the line, you know? I wish I could actually talk to you guys. I feel like I'm talking to myself. So here we go. Just pulling it straight up and down. When you overlap it a little bit, that's where you're getting your lines. See that? There's no mistakes with alcohol inks. None. You can go over it and over it and over it and you can just fix it and fix it and perfect it and or you can just roll with whatever throat whatever you know comes off of the brush whatever you want to do whatever you have the time for whatever look you're going for you can take care of all of that so you can 
just bring that up in there. It's so nice and smooth, but you really get that effect. There, you're really getting that beautiful effect. It's amazing what a simple um, bottle of alcohol inks can do when it comes to the wood grains. This is really all that I use them for. Well, I've also done the Harry Potter, you know, the, uh, the Marauder's Map Cup. I've done that. Um, Mary and I, we love Harry Potter. Mary a little more than me. Mary's getting ready to have a big birthday in October, and her theme is um, she's actually doing a Harry Potter theme. And she's going to be crafting all of her own supplies, I mean, uh, decorations, and, and she's got all these really cool um, ideas for it. And we've been kicking around some ideas, so it, we're going to have a lot of fun. As it so happens on the same day as Mary's birthday, I also have um, my aunt's 60th birthday. Is It's going to be a big, fancy ball gown theme here at a, at the um, a hotel called the Jefferson, and that's here in Richmond, Virginia. Um, so I'm looking forward to hitting that, and also some good friends of ours are getting married on that day. So I have three events that I have to try to make in one day. <laughs> so that should be fun. <laughs> It'll be like uh, when you go uh, to present an Oscar and you have all these different outfit changes. So... Yeah, that'll be fun. And then, um, we'll, we'll have to post some pictures, Mayor, when we get your party. When you get your party going and you get all your decorations up and all that, we'll have to post some. So everybody can see. Because it's going to be amazing. Mary always has a huge bonfire at her place. And um, it's always a lot of fun when we go out there. Mary has, uh, they have birthday party for her every fall and her husband usually in the spring. And then we went out there for a late 4th of July party, barbecue. We had a great time. Some of us may have had a little too much to drink, but that's okay. <laughs> All right. So we've gone over with our second coat. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit because I'm gonna go in here. I just want to add some more right here. It's not enough. This little plane right there, I think. We got some good lines going right there. What do you think, guys? Does it look good? Look at that bottom. See those lines? Woohoo! <sighs> Thanks, Mary. Throw me under the bus. I do talk to myself a lot. I find that um, I give myself great counsel. <laughs> I talk to myself, I run around the house and sing, um, but I keep myself good company. Keep myself good company. Okay. So we've got the bottom. I try to just kind of like even that out. All right, let's see. Let's try, where was that blank spot? Mm, kind of right there, but it's okay. All right, I think I'm gonna come in here and do another knot. I'm gonna use the same color that I've been working with, which is that teak color. And we're just gonna drag it out. Just drag it out. So with the first one, like this, dragging it out. Ooh, it's not run. No running. No running in the hall, children. I've been watching Facebook, and I'm seeing a lot of my cousins' kids are going back to school today. And I'm just, especially in in Florida, I'm like, gosh, uh, August back to school in Florida. That's gonna be so hot. So hot. I'm just working that knot with that same color. So I like to use the little brush for the knot, but if you only have one brush, just please, girls, please don't use Mac brushes for this, okay? Don't if you don't if you have Mac brushes you don't want anymore. I take donations. 
okay? Just let you know, I'm just throwing that out there. I do take donations on the MAC brushes. I find that um, sometimes a softer touch with the wood grain, with the knots, softer touch sometimes. You can kind of move the ink to where you want it to go. Let it dry. This is another technique. Once you get a base started, the ink will stay inside of the original knots that you guys did. So, you can kind of move that a little bit if you want to. And just move it a little bit. There we go. I just let that spread out. I'm kind of letting that spread out a little bit. We're letting that spread. I'm just pulling it a little bit and working on that knot. It's not even coming out to my liking, but that's okay. I'm gonna let that sit there. This knot's being difficult. I don't know if it's because the um, spray paint hadn't quite cured enough yet or what. I'm just going to pull it out. See, look. Perfect. I didn't like that knot, so I can just pull it right out. All the way up. All the way down. You can even that out. Go over another spot. Make it darker in other places. No big deal. Let's put a little bit of that dark one there try that. So we're gonna just pull it. I'm using, I'm gonna use the side of the brush. Just pull it where I want it to be. I do like the darker color for the knots, for sure. See, here we go. I'm pulling that out. That looks a little bit better. It almost reminds me of a geode when I do these knots. It's like a reverse geode. Oh gosh, Texas is hot. I was just talking today with one of my cousins about Texas. She was, we were discussing, um, she was telling me she liked the name of our business. And, um, so we were talking about, I told her we were, try, you know, trying to keep southern names with our glitters and things like that. And her husband is from Texas, and she lives here in Virginia, and they, they live here in Virginia. Her husband's from there, and she, we were discussing how he doesn't eat grits, and <laughs> he doesn't eat sweet potatoes, and they don't, they don't really eat that in Texas. And I was like, are you serious? This is looking like doo-doo. Um, <laughs> I was like, wow. Um. So we were talking about that, and she said Texas really isn't like being in the South because in Texas they're their own state. And she said when her husband was little, he thought we we were we lived in the United States of Texas because it's all about Texas is all about Texas. So she said she was there last year, and she was taking pictures of everything um, that had Texas on it. She's like the stuff in the stores, everything is Texas. So Texas is its own thing. So I learned something new today about Texas. <laughs> so you guys do, um, you guys do some cool stuff though. Uh, I love the the football there, how big it is. It's dripping in the wrong spot. So we messed that up. It's caca. I don't like it. Um. So yeah, so you guys, I don't know what you call those ribbons that the girls wear for the for the football games and stuff. They're like bouquets or something like that. Oh, you guys used to live in Virginia Beach. We're not too far from there. They actually opened up a vinyl store down there that I've been to a couple times. But I got mad and I stopped going because I would go there and literally like the next day they would have this in-store sale. And I was like, you couldn't, you know, do that when I was there? It's rude. I'm coming all this way to come to the vinyl store and... You don't even have sales and wait till somebody's not there. You, and But they wouldn't do them online either. It was just for if you came in the store. So I didn't like that at all. This knot is very large. 
and it's getting bigger. I'm gonna leave it alone because I don't like it. Uh, but I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna pull off some of the vinyl for the peekaboo so you guys can see that. Yes, we will save it and we will post it on the page, Sheila. Absolutely. Um, I won't be watching it because I don't like to watch myself on the video. Maybe five seconds, but yeah. Okay, so let's get let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and just start pulling off some of the vinyl. Yeah, ha we have to be careful. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to do that. You know why? Because I have to clear coat this first. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that terrible knot, and then I'm going to let this dry for a few. Because if you don't let it dry, and you hit it with the clear coat when it's wet, it turns green. And then you have a pickle, and not a wood grain. We don't want a pickle, okay? No pickles. Unless you want a pickle, and that's great. You can use green um, water slide for that and have a great time. I'm going to let this dry, and then I'm going to take it outside, and I'm going to put a clear coat on it. After the clear coat is done and dry, which will be not tonight, I'm going to let it sit overnight. I will take this tool, which I got at Michael's. It's like a little mini stiletto, isn't it? That's what it reminds me of. It's like, bam! I got this. Sometimes they have the paper crafting stuff. Buy one, get one free. So I got this and I got a bone folder. The bone folder was free. This was like $6. This is what I use for a lot of my weeding. It's a pointy little doodad. And I love it. It's great. So I will take this little doodad and I will pop off the vinyls that I've used. I call them, you know, negatives. And the glitter will be underneath and it's going to be dull. Um, so after that, I'm going to put the, um, I have some text I'm going to put on this, some writing. And after I do that, I will put a coat of epoxy and probably another coat of epoxy over that. So, so it'll probably end up with a total of four coats of epoxy on this bad boy. But what's nice about that is that it's a mason jar. So it's not going in cup holders and stuff. It's kind of just for like when I'm hanging out and sitting outside with my sister or something. And you know, we're having a glass of wine and sitting outside. We'll, we'll have glasses of wine in the mason jars and it'll be so much fun. So that's what's gonna happen with this bad boy. Lime cup, right? Tequila, tequila. So when it's finished, I will post um, some pictures of it and you guys can see and judge it. And that'll be that. For you latecomers, I did a, uh, the first thing I did was a very light Tiffany blue, very light turquoise base coat with our very own glitter. I used um, Moon Magic. I used the sample size, did the whole mason jar. This is the sample size of our glitter. Okay, this is Moon Magic with the opal. And I promise you that when you see that with epoxy over it, you are going to be amazed at how beautiful that is. So if you don't have a good opal, that is a beautiful opal. All right, guys. Well, I hope that, um, I hope I didn't bore you with the live. I hope you guys liked uh, the peekaboo tutorial. And the wood grain. I kind of threw that in at last minute. I wasn't really sure I was going to do that. And I decided last minute that I was going to wood grain that. So anyway. Um, also, I might come in. I have this. This is a metal right here. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a mixative or whatever. This goes. This is like ridiculous. I mean, you just need a very tiny, tiny bit of this. But I use this in wood grains a lot. I also use this when I do like my distress tumblers or my brass tumblers, like, like the one I did for Mary. Um, and what this is, I have stuff like sticky stuff all over my hands. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a metallic mixative, okay? And what I'll do is I'll put a couple drops on a piece of paper, right? And wipe off my wood grain brush really good, which is makeup brush for you guys coming late. Um, it's just a foundation, cheap foundation brush. Pick it up wherever. I don't know where I got this one from. It's old, but you can grab a Wet n Wild one for a couple bucks. It, they, they're great. They're reusable. You can, you know, use them all the time. So I take the brush and I put a drop of the metallic mixative. Now I'm sticking. 
And then you can take the brush and you just kind of rub it up and down on that, just like you were doing the wood grain. And you just need a very light, thin coat. And I don't know if you can see on camera what it does, but it gives it this beautiful, like, popping, glowing. It really makes the, it, it doesn't over gold it. You know, it's not putting on super lot of gold, but it does give it like a beautiful glow. It almost makes it like the wood is just glowing like naturally and it's not picking up very good on camera how beautiful it actually is. But it works really well with that Adirondack set of Tim Holtz. You can just go right in. You can put as much as you want or just a little here and there. But when you're doing it, it just gets... It, light, it looks like it's lightening it up on the camera, but it's really like a little bit of a golden glow on there. And it's just, it's very, very pretty. So you can go in and do that. You can always layer if you want, if you don't feel like you have enough or, or whatever, but it gives it a warm glow to it. It's, be it's beautiful, especially under the epoxy. It looks great. And I did that. Um, I actually have a mason jar that I wood grained for myself that I did a peekaboo. I used like a teal chunky mix that I mixed myself and um, I did like a moonshine cup for myself. I, I don't drink moonshine. I just think mason jars and moonshine go together. So I did that. Um, but anyway, there's a lot of things you do with wood grain and you don't have to use um, browns. You can use, I've seen some beautiful teals. You know, you can use a, there's a gray color that's, um, it's like a dark gray. You can add a little bit of that to the teal and uh, you can give yourself a beach look beached wood um, you can do I've seen some really cool even pink wood grains and um, you know camos there's a lot of cool stuff you know you can start collecting um, I have lots of alcohol inks and I just get them on sale and collect them as I go um, you don't have to buy everything at once but buy some glitter <laughs> go check out our website I just put up a fall bundle yesterday it's called pile of leaves and it's um, it's all the fall colors. We have cranberry chutney metallic. We have um, Vegas baby gold. We have um, hi babe, see ya. My husband's watching. Um, <laughs> we have what other colors are there? I'm drawing a blank. It's a cranberry, and then it's oh, it's rum raisins, which is like a deep burgundy-ish brownish color and then um, mm -hmm, there's another metallic in there it's all the colors of the fall y'all bundle plus we have the hollow rusted metal and the hollow campfire coffee and then there's the chunky uh, brass knuckles that was the other color the metallic fine blend brass knuckles so you're gonna get the chunky brass knuckles and you're gonna get the chunky um, Vegas baby and I also have a sample size pack of fall leaves that we're getting ready to stock in like another two weeks I think um, so that's in there oh yeah Chrissy used cranberry chutney and Vegas baby together on a cup and she showed me the other yesterday she showed me and they were beautiful together uh, so I can't wait to see that Chrissy when you um, when you epoxy that so make sure you let us see that Cranberry chutney is a beautiful cranberry. I mean, it's it's a really good um, burgundy. It's a true burgundy. There's not a lot of places where you can find an actual true burgundy. So we do have that available. Um, but anyway, so the the pile of leaves bundle is an amazing deal. You're going to get that for 28 bucks plus shipping. And you can pick that right up on our website. Um, I'll post the link if you don't have it. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's eight bags of glitter plus the sample size of leaves which will do probably two cups if you're just sprinkling it um so go grab that also grab an opal you will not be sorry with one of these opals i promise you they're beautiful thanks so much for watching guys i really appreciate it have a great night if i can just finish this